we're going to bring the, the woman of the hour, the speaker of the hour. And if everybody can stand all over the building. I want to present to some and introduce to others none other than our own prophetess, pastor, Shalanda Shulman. Let us pray. Eternal Father, we thank you. We lift you up. We magnify you, God. We glorify you. God, there's none like you in all the earth. Ask that you forgive me for all of my sins, God. Father, then we ask that you would just continue to rest upon this building. Let someone be saved, set free, and delivered, God. Father God, let someone be healed in the name of Jesus. Regulate somebody's mind right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, look and heal somebody's heart right now. We just say thank you right now. Look upon the bishop and the first lady, God. Bless their household in the name of Jesus. Why don't you just give them the desires of their heart, God? We just say thank you right now. Look upon every auxiliary Jesus right now in the name of Jesus. We ever need you, we need you right now. We give you the glory, we give you the praise, we give you the honor. We claim that this shall be the greatest Christmas we've ever had. And we thank you in advance right now, God. We give you the glory. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my God, my Redeemer. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Come on, put your blessings together in this house. We bless God because God has been good to me. Oh man, not just sometime, but all of my life. God has been good to me. I've had myself a good time, Keisha. I've had a ball in here today. Because just seeing the saints, sometimes I don't get to see because I get caught up myself. But I love seeing people praise God. Amen. And be able to feel the presence of God. Give the Holy Ghost a head and praise. All right. Reverence God, and I give honor to my bishop. Yeah. Give it up for Bishop and First Lady William. Come on, y'all, give me that again. We honor him, amen. Not only my bishop, but my father, the world's greatest father. Amen. To my fellow constituents in the gospel, amen. All of the male and female, to the deacons, mothers, amen. Ushers, and everybody in their respectful places. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I bless God because I, I, on the way here, all of a sudden, I, I, I wasn't feeling well. And, and it seemed like the more I drove, and the more I was getting hot, I, I stopped and I said, let me get some food. I stopped at McDonald's and I, they, they didn't have breakfast and I really didn't want to eat what they had, but I bought Happy Meal, trying to make, bring myself back. Because it felt like something was low, something was off. And I, um, I got it. I ate probably two fries and I gave it to the kids because I still wasn't feeling well. And I got here just hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. But I know the tricks of the enemy. Yeah. When, when, when the enemy don't want you to deliver, he'll try to block it. And this is just to the ministers alone. When, when you, it's time for you to preach or it's time for you to whatever, know that the adversary is going to come. That don't mean you don't preach. That means preach even the more. Because there is something in you that the devil is trying to stop from getting out of you. And I know that there is a word from the Lord. Put your blessed hands together. I came up here with my coat on. I, I still was hot. Then when the Holy Ghost came in, I got hot. I was cold, then I got hot. And I just thank God that I feel all right right now. Give Jesus a hand praise. I wanted to be up here without my coat, but I know. Amen. Life has bought me tattoos and all just be highly inappropriate. We have to know what's inappropriate in the pulpit. Yeah. Amen. And where I, it would make me comfortable, but it doesn't make it right. right. Amen. I wish I had some witnesses in here. Just everything can't go in the pulpit. I really wanted to wear some jeans and get comfortable and whatever, but I, I still have to obey God and, and obey the rules of this house. Amen. And I just bless God for it. But let's go to the book of Luke, the 17th chapter. Let's preach up in here. Amen. 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 We could turn down the heat. That'll help a lot, though. Amen. The book of Luke, the 17th chapter. When you have it, 
Everyone, please stand. Amen. We have to respond by saying, I got it, preacher. I got it, preacher. Luke 17. Wow. And we're going to go to the 11th verse. Amen. You got to say, I got it, preacher. Luke, the 17th chapter, 11th verse, and it reads, And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered to a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face and his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers that hear his special blessings to the doers of his word. Amen. And as always, when the Holy Ghost get through with me, I'll be through with you all. And just for a moment, we're going to talk about, look at your neighbor, say neighbor. neighbor. The preacher's going to preach about it. A change is coming. A change is coming. Look at somebody else say, neighbor, the preacher told me to tell you a change is coming. I don't know about you, but I do and I must confess that in my life there are some things that I need to change. I know that there are some areas in my life that need to change in my life. I know there are some places that I go that I need to change. There are some things in my banking account that need to change. There are some discipline in my life that needs to change. I wish I had about five folk in here saying that they have some things in their life that they need to change. I don't know about y'all, but I, I'm tired of being in a place where I'm at. I'm tired of being stagnated. I'm tired of being stuck. I need something to happen, not just for me, but the people around me, the people attached to me, my children. My children, my children, children, my, pe my people that are all attached to me, my friends, my boo, everybody that's attached to you is going to need a change when you change. See, the problem is you can't change without the people around you change. The reason why you can ask me, if you don't, if you change and the people that you attach to don't change, you'll end up right back in the same situation. I wish I had about three folks say, you'll end up right back in the same place that you are in. But God is saying, in this season, you need to get around some people that's for your good. You need to get around some people that's going to lift you up. You need to get around some people that's going to tell you things that's right. In this season, I want you to know, God said that a change is coming. But in order for that change to come, you have to set your house in order. Well, what is the change that I need to do? Well, that's the individual thing. The Bible says, let a man examine himself. When you examine yourself, you know the things that you need to change. You know the things that you need to get in order. God is saying, I'm seeing the change, but are you ready for the change? Look at yourself and say, I need to get in position. You want to win $24,000 a year, but yet you ain't put yourself in order. You want to own a brand new house, but yet you ain't cleaning up the one you got. You want a brand new car, but your trunk, your trunk is junky. Everything all over your car. You can't even clean your car up in order for God to bless you with something. In order for God to bless you with something new, you got to empty out that thing. You got to empty out your car. You got to empty out I'm talking spiritual now. You gotta empty out so God can fill you up. God can fill you up if you already feel. Come on, That's good. Come on. God said, I'm trying to send the change. I don't know what change you need, and sometimes it ain't even about behavior. See, so many people stuck on your behavior. They don't see the real change that you do. Sometimes change is just forgiven. Some of us, we have not forgave people for what they did. We have not let go of the animosity that we have. We're still holding on and we want God to change the things in our life. But he can't change it because we got that one thing that's in our way. You are one forgiveness away from your freedom. You 
And I want you to know that life is short. And tomorrow is not promised. And the Bible says don't even worry about tomorrow. You worry about right now. But I want you to know in order to go to the next level, you have to let go and let go. We have to protect our anointing. Our anointing, we have to protect it. I remember Bishop was sitting there telling Shelby how you don't want God to take your anointing. You don't want God to take that thing that you got, that you praise him with, that you give God. You don't want God to take it. You know, you have to be, you know, like a kangaroo. A kangaroo has a thing where when they get ready to get pregnant, when they embryo finally do what it's supposed to do, they have the, they have the ability to pause the reproduction and the development of the baby. You know why? They're able to pause it from growing. You know how a baby, no matter what, is going to grow uh, two, three months, four months. But a kangaroo can pause it because if the kangaroo look around and there's no food, and they look around and there's no shelter for them, there's no protection, guess what? It won't let the baby come. And they hold it. You can look it up if you want to. They hold it. It pauses its own development. It pauses in itself until it has seen a place where there's enough food, where there's enough for everything that they need. They make sure there's enough before they let it grow. Until the environment is favorable for survival. Listen, ministers, deacons, mothers, all auxiliaries, listen, you cannot birth something. If it ain't what? If the timing is off, it ain't tough. That's why so many ministries are dying. So many ministries are not making it. So many ministries are closing up. Because they allowing something to be birthed in the favor. The environment is not favored for survival. All right, all right. You don't even have to be a ministry, men in the ministry at all. You don't even have to be a preacher. But whatever it is that God have and you have you to do, you have to make sure that you are right and you are ready or it's going to die. It messed me up because I wish I could have back then paused my ministry. Then I wouldn't have never disappointed so many people. Preaching is more than getting up in this pulpit. Yeah. Preaching is a lifestyle. Yeah. And if you fail the lifestyle, you will fail the people. Yeah. I wish I could take back some of the things that I did out of the opening. I wish I could take back some of the, I wish I could take back some of the people that I trusted. I wish I could take back some of the, I can't take it back. I wish. Sure. But when God show you, who people are. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a whole nother song. When, when God, that's a whole nother song. When God show you who they are, you better believe them. See, our problem, we can't let go. We just gotta have them around. We just gotta do this. We just gotta, and God's trying to bless you with better and more, and we can't, can't even change your situation because what? Because you won't get out the way. You and y'all look at yourself and say, I'm in my own way. I'm in my own deliverance way. I'm in my own freedom way. I'm in my own way because the change is already here. I just need to get out the way. Listen, there was, you have to trust God in this season. I'm almost done. In this season, God said, you got to trust me. With your whole life, yes. your your business, yes. you gotta trust them with all of it. Yes. You, you gotta trust them with all, no matter what the condition. Yes. You have to trust him with all of it. Yes. All of it. Look at me say all of it. Let me tell you, there was four people that got invited to this plane, and this plane was state of the art. It was one of the best ones that has ever be, been built. But they was only able to invite four people. So they invited these four people to this plane. 
Three of them, one of them, was, he owned so many Walmarts. And the other one, he owned so many McDonald's. And the other one, he owned so many stadiums in the United States. And then there was a little boy that they allowed to go on this plane. When they got on the plane, the people began to make the announcement. And when they made the announcement, they say, oh, we forgot to tell you. This plane is state of the art. Nobody has ever rode on here before. You are the first. Because they, was mil they were millionaires. They had lots of money. So they were chosen to be the first ones to get on this plane. And as they began to close the door and prepare to take off, they looked and they said, oh, by the way, we have never took this plane up with nobody before. And as they heard the people say, one by one, Mr. Walmart said, wait a minute, can you let me off the plane? He said, I, I got too many, uh, I, I got too many people that's depending on me. I got a French, I got this, I got that. Let me off the plane, I can't go. They was like, well, we'll let you off the plane. They let him off the plane. And then here come the McDonald's man. He said, wait a minute. I own, you got to let me off of here. You're not going to do that. Uh -uh. I got to get off all because this plane had never been in the air. But it was state of the art. He said, let me off of the plane. And they said, okay, Mr. Mack, we let him off the plane. And then last but not least, the last one, they thought he was going to say. And they say, he said, wait a minute, I can't stay either. They doing a game and they got to have me here just in case we win. I got to be there. No, let me off the plane. They let him off the plane. So the, the, the lady got on the thing and she went back and she looked and she seen the little boy. She said, wait a minute. McDonald's got off the plane. Walmart got off the plane. The guy that owned all the state. And they said, wait a minute. Somebody done left the little boy. So he went over to the little boy and the little boy had his earphones on and he was just smiling and playing with his game. So the lady said, hey, did not you see everybody else leave? And he said, yes, ma'am. He said, well, why are you still here? Did you not hear me say that? This plane has never been written before. This is the first time it's going up. He said, yeah. He said, do you want to get off? And why are you here? He said, I'm here because I know the pilot. The pilot is my father. And I know what he can do. God is saying right here, right you might be in a situation and it look new. You don't want to step out into the waters. God told me to tell you, I am the pot. Look at somebody say, I'm the plus one to the pot. I'm the plus one to the pot. I'm the plus one to the pot. And I know what my God can do. He can make ways out of no way. He can turn your midnight into day. He is God. to the village 
Myrtle, there met him ten men yeah. that had lepers. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And y'all already know the backdrop. Y'all heard this sermon 50,000 times. But the Bible says that they seen Jesus and they were far off. I'm sure it probably was for me to look book over there. They seen Jesus. And uh, it's so amazing because everybody need healing. They all seen Jesus in passing. Nobody ever said somebody knocked on Jesus' door. In other words, we have to get out in the streets like Bishop said because everybody ain't gonna come to the house. We gotta go out there and let them see the works of what God is doing. So uh, 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 the Bible says that they seen him from far off. And, 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 and they came and the Bible says that they lifted up their voices. And, and, and it was amazing because they said three things. They said Jesus, then they said Master, and then they said, Ralph, have mercy on us. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was looking at that Grams, and when I looked at it, I thought about that thing. They called him Jesus because they knew his name. Yeah. But they called him Master because they knew what he could do. our car fixed, we take it to the shade tree. We take it to the shade tree, Keisha, because we feel like we'll get a cheaper deal. But if you take it to the master, if you got a Chevrolet, you're going to take it to GMC, you take it to GMC. If you got a Lexus, you take it. If you take it to the maker, it's going to cost you more. But it's going to Master, and the only thing they said is, Lord, have mercy on us. And sometimes, yeah, somebody in the situation right now, I don't care how bad it is, I don't care if you put yourself in it, but you know what? If you call on Jesus, He's obligated to pull you out of it. Don't y'all know the only reason why I'm standing up here preaching to T.I. is because of Jesus? Because if you go by my track record, I should be sitting out there all the way back where ain't paid it, but because of grace and mercy. Oh, what a wonderful change! The Bible says, seeing them afar off. And they begin to say, Jesus. They said, Master. Then they said, have mercy on us. And the Bible says, Jesus saw them. Thank you, God. He, he never said he heard them. Yes. Wow. Jesus saw them. Jesus see what you got with them. He see you late in the midnight hour. He see you when you're in your car all by yourself. He see you when you're crying all by yourself. Jesus see, he looking, he see you. And when he seen them, and I can only imagine how they was acting. Just throw your hands up, little book. Just jump up and down, throw your hands up. Just, just, yes, yes. They over there, they cutting up. They, Jesus see them. And guess what he said here? He didn't say, hey y'all, y'all here. Uh -huh. He didn't say, oh, make me whole. <laughs> you know what he said? Go show yourself. When he seen them, he seen their condition. Yes. So he knew what they needed. Jesus already know what you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he's giving you a chance to be obedient. He said, go show yourself. And back then, the reason they had to go show yourself because the Moses law, the priest had to declare you clean. So if the, if the priest didn't declare you clean, you can be around people. So that's why I always thought they were standing right in front of Jesus. They never made it to Jesus because they couldn't get in front of him. All right. So they was afar off. Far, Jesus was afar off. Right now, some of feeling like Jesus ain't right there. Is Jesus really hearing me? Ain't nothing changed. Ain't nothing whatever. Can you hear me, Jesus? I, I mean, it seems like you're far away. I mean, is it, Jesus really here? Before, but, but Jesus was afar so away, and he said, yeah. Yeah. He told them to go show yourself. Yeah, yeah. And the Bible say, and they went. Go back. Yeah. But as they went, as they went. Come on. Come on. the Bible says, 
say on their way there. Yeah, yeah. The Bible say they were cleansed. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, the, yeah. the cleansing came from their obedience. Yeah. It might have sound foolish because they were waiting on their healing to come a one way. Some of y'all are stuck right now because you're looking for another way and Jesus and gave you a way. But it's not what you want. Which is why you're still stuck in the same place because you're looking for Jesus to do it your way. But he got it his way. So the Bible say, and he went and guess what? As they became clean, one of them looked down and recognized, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> wait a minute. I looked at my hands and they looked new. He looked at his Can you imagine what he looked around? Wait a minute. I ain't itching. I ain't scratching. Out. Wait a minute. I, do y'all see? By this time they were gone. And the Bible say that one came back. Yeah. How did you know that he how did you know? I, I knew that he was cleansed because the Bible say he ran up to Jesus. Uh -huh. Dropped down in front of him at his feet. Yeah. So he knew that he had been cleansed. So because he, he approached him because he no longer had what he had. Uh, and when he got there, the Bible say he began to thank Jesus. Jesus looked at him. Told him, get up, go your way. What, 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 what the rest of <laughs> Did not we cleanse? Ten? Yeah, right. Well, the nine. Mm. He didn't know where the nine went. I don't even think he cared. <laughs> but this is what happened. When God do something for you, and you, you come back and you tell him, thank you. Let me tell you. They all were cleansed. But Jesus told him to go your way because now, because you came back and say thank you, your faith have made you whole. See, they were cleansed, but he was made whole. In other words, they had lepers, but you don't know what else they had. See, y'all only know a couple of my struggles because I told you. But y'all don't know everything that I deal with on that. I wish I had some witnesses in here. Uh, y'all, anybody dealing with some stuff that you ain't even told nobody. See, y'all got some things. I might say, oh, you get this, you get that. I only know what you, but you don't know all the stuff that I go through when I go home, when I leave this place. So whatever he was going through, from his mental to his physical to his spiritual, Jesus said, all of that. Look at your neighbor and say, all of that. He rose from the dead. He got up with all power. He got up with all power in his hands. He's coming back again. Will you be ready? The doors of the church are open. God bless you. Thank you for tuning us in here at New Shadow Light here. Come before the crowd with the great city of this show, Lord. We thank you. May God forever bless you and keep you. Thank you for tuning us in. God bless you.